Street Fighter, a necessity for gracious living. <laughs> Since Street Fighter II The World Warrior hit arcades in 1991, the Street Fighter brand has become a recognisable household name in gaming and functioned as the blueprint for all fighting games that were to come. The Super Nintendo would be the first home platform on which this classic could be experienced. Still, it was just a matter of time before a crazy amount of versions were also published to run on other hardware, including a bootleg version of the game for the Famicom and all Nintendo 8-bit clone systems. Like the arcade game itself, this dubious creation would receive many updates and reiterations, meaning that there is a range of different unlicensed versions of this game that are out there to enjoy. In today's upload, we will look at another one and celebrate another chapter in bootleg history. Street Fighter 2 bootlegs are simply amazing. That intro never gets old, does it? Well, I am Lady Decade, and this is the crazy Street Fighter X Turbo 40. Another mental Street Fighter game. Throughout video game history, few titles' existences are so intertwined with unlicensed bootlegs like Street Fighter 2. With one of the most popular iterations in the series, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, coming about due to inspiration from an arcade bootleg. Shortly after the release of Champion Edition in the arcades, Taiwanese bootleggers would create a hack commonly known as Rainbow Edition, which allowed gamers to shoot off multiple fireballs at once switch characters out of play during combat, but most engaging of all, a faster play speed. Capcom would pick up on the excitement that the latter quirk would add to the game and decide to increase the play speed within the next official version. In fact, many gamers now consider Turbo Hyper Fighting as the greatest edition of Street Fighter 2, which of course would never have existed if it were not for the bootleg scene. God bless video game piracy. The arcade hacks would not be the only unlicensed Street Fighter games emerging from Taiwan. One particular development house located there would create a version allowing more players to experience Street Fighter 2 fever than ever before. Just one year after the World Warriors official release in the arcade, and the same year Street Fighter 2 debuted on the Super Nintendo, Taiwanese company Hummer Team would develop a Street Fighter game compatible with the Famicom and all clone systems. Systems. While crude looking, compared to what SNES owners had at their disposal, Hummer Team's effort was a surprisingly functional fighting game for a Famicom game, with the addition of large and impressive looking sprites and colourful backgrounds successfully capturing the Street Fighter 2 spirit. This meant that those throughout the developing world didn't need an expensive 16-bit official Nintendo machine to enjoy a slice of Street Fighter 2 mania at home. The game served its purpose and generated as much nostalgia as the arcade original for many gamers. But just like the arcade version of the game, this bootleg would be revised time and time again. Before we move on with this video, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone watching today. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my video, making niche content covering obscure things like Taiwanese bootlegs. It means getting YouTube to suggest my videos to people is challenging. It would really, really help me if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons to ensure you see more videos like this in the future. And once again, thank you so much for watching today. So let's get on with this story. I love a large number of Hummer Team games were published by Kony. Often going under the different identity of Yokosoft, Kony is registered to the Hong Kong-based Wonderful Trading Company, so it is presumed that development was handled in Taiwan, with publishing taking place in Hong Kong. 
Coney Woods published many of Hummer Team's Street Fighter 2 reiterations with changes to the game, including new characters, stages, selection screens and more. In fact, the title screen would often be altered, with the game carrying titles such as Street Blaster 2 to get around certain trademark laws in particular regions. 1993 would see Coney release multiple new game versions, including Street Fighter X Turbo 40. So let's look at what is different about this one from the original base version. When powering the game on, we get a new title screen which features rainbow coloration, most likely acknowledging the famous hack that had swept arcades. Moving to the character select screen is where things get crazy, because as the game title suggests, 40 character portraits can be chosen from. Inspecting the screen closer though, many of the portraits are just colour palette swaps of others, so the game is nowhere near as mammoth in scale as it tries to present itself as. Sneaky sneaky. The original Famiclone version of Street Fighter 2 only featured four playable characters, Liu, Guile, Zangief and Chun-Li, with M. Bison also appearing as a boss-only fighter, or Vigor, I guess, as he is labelled in this game's case. A later iteration of the game known as Street Fighter 4 Pro 10 would add Balrog and Vega to the lineup, with X40 adding even more characters, including Sagat and making M. Bison playable. Just like in modern sporting events, Russia's representative would be dropped, meaning gamers could no longer play as Zangief but at least a much more off-the-wall roster member would be included instead. The new character I am referring to is Terry Bogard of Fatal Fury fame, a welcome inclusion in the game. As for the ridiculously huge roster select screen I showed off earlier, each character is playable in this one in three different colour palettes. You can individually access each one through this stupidly extensive character menu. One of the game's most striking features is how bright, bold and colourful the entire experience is, featuring a mixture of recreations of stages from Street Fighter 2 and stage backdrops that were not from the original franchise. Ken's stage, as you can see here, offers an absurd amount of colours, making the rainbow logo for the game make further sense. M. Bison, or Vega as he is known in Japan, has an entirely different stage from the one he is famous for fighting on. His stage features clones he makes for himself in the background, with the Kony logo slapped proudly on the side of the wall. You've got to love Kony. The game also features some excellently written English win quotes, such as Ha! Very easy! Congration! Genius! Blank stage and theme are also included in the game, something that was not a part of the original iteration of the title. E Honda is also here with a recreation of his classic stage, but perhaps best is the game's North Pole stage. For some reason, there is a background featuring ice, igloos and even the Northern Lights, but perhaps most hilarious of all, a bunch of drunks cheering on the fighting who are all dressed as Santa Claus. This is utterly amazing. As demonstrated by all of this, just like Capcom themselves, Kony and Hummer Team regularly made extensive changes to their work to refine it and include new fighters and content. With a range of new fighters to choose from, new stages and new music, there is a range of reasons why someone who purchased Street Fighter 2 for their Famiclone may have wanted to upgrade their copy to Street Fighter X Turbo 40. Mirroring the official version of Street Fighter 2 once more, this would not be the final iteration of Kony's Street Fighter 2. Later, a version known as Super Blaster 7 Turbo 28 made more changes. There was also Street Fighter 5 Turbo 60, which I could explore in more detail in a future upload perhaps, but in brief, they included more characters such as Andy Bogard and Mai Shiranui, for example, who is to boobs what Chun Li is to legs. Wa wa wee wa. The history of Street Fighter bootlegs is a rich, convoluted subject, with perhaps even more unofficial games than official iterations and conversions in the series. That's saying something, considering how often Capcom seems to revisit, tweak and re-release each entry from their classic series. 
Street Fighter X Turbo 40 gave us an interesting stage in the evolution of one of the most recognisable bootleg video games ever. The commercial success of Hummer Team's Street Fighter endeavours would give the developers the confidence to branch out into making NES versions of other 16-bit classics such as Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country and the ridiculous Samari, a recreation of Sonic the Hedgehog for the NES switching Sonic out for a Mario looking character. Apart from spawning great games back in their day, these Hummer Team games were appreciated by many and deserve documenting and celebrating. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, why not check out my Super Mario World for the NES video now. See you soon.